All right, today I'm going to share my optimized keybinds for the Tarkov Killer Arena Breakout Infinite. In any complex game, having well thought out keybinds is critical. Good keybinds make your actions faster and more intuitive. When your most used commands are within easy reach, you can react quickly to in game events without fumbling around the keyboard. They also help reduce strain and fatigue. If your controls are spread out and awkward, you're more likely to experience discomfort during long gaming sessions. In this video, I'm going to share my keybind set that I've optimized over 4,000 hours of gameplay and looter shooter extraction titles. But before we get into it, make sure to equip a couple of Molotov cocktails and chuck them directly at the like and subscribe buttons faces. Alright, let's jump into it. Alright, the first setting we'll look at is mouse sensitivity. It's pretty self-explanatory and they have a little key on the right that tells you what it is. Basically, it's your camera sensitivity as you move your mouse. I'm a wrist aimer, so the 1.0 default setting is pretty decent for me. You can kick it up to 4.0. It's going to increase the sensitivity. As you can see, I'm swinging my mouse the same amount, but my camera is moving a lot more at 4, obviously. It looks like the game has a little trouble keeping up when you have a very high sensitivity, so just keep that in mind. I've also heard that people are having lagging issues if your DPI is set too high, so... So test these settings out and adjust it according to your liking. I like it right at 1.0, that's fine for me. The next setting we'll look at is aim sensitivity. You can expand this to adjust the sensitivity for each zoom level. So if you like the sensitivity to go lower when you're zoomed in more, you can adjust that accordingly. I don't really mess with all that right now, but um, as you can see the difference between one and four it's pretty drastic. It's very sensitive at 4 and as you can see the game's starting to stutter a little bit when I leave it too high. So I suggest leaving it a little bit lower. Here's the lower boundary. As you can see it doesn't move around that much at all at 0 0.1. So again I like to leave it right at 1.0. I think that works fine for me. Some people like to lower their ADS sensitivity so that when you are aimed in on a target that your crosshair doesn't move as much. So sensitivity preferences are going to be subjective so I suggest you test it out and see what works best for you. Next we're going to look at free camera sensitivity. This is like moving your head around in game so you can continue walking in a certain direction but if you hold down the middle mouse button then it's kind of like moving your head around in game you can look around as you're still moving in a certain direction so here's what it looks like at 0 0.1 at the minimum lower boundary and when i take my finger off the free look button you can see the sensitivity returns to the general mouse sensitivity setting and here is the upper boundary at 4. So when I go free look, it's very twitchy and you can adjust your camera view very quickly. Personally, I like to leave all of the sensitivities matched so that my muscle memory stays the same for each aiming type. But I think this is highly subjective, so adjust these according to your own preferences. Okay, next we're going to look at double click interval. This is if you have any keys bound to double press. Like it says, it controls how long that interval can last between the two presses that will initiate that double press action. At 1.0, it will leave that window open for a full second, and at the default setting, it'll be at 0.3, which is 0.3 seconds. So here it is at 0.3. I have to press the key pretty quickly to initiate that action. If I wait a little bit, it's not going to recognize that action. All right, moving on, you can invert the x-axis. That means when you move the mouse to the right, the view is going to turn to the left. And when you go left, the view is going to turn to the right. And as you can see here, when I turn it off, it's back to left is left and right is right. The next setting is invert y-axis. The y-axis is your up and down movement. So if you invert it, when you move your mouse up, the camera is going to move down and vice versa. All right, the next option is quick throw. This basically will make your character throw a grenade immediately instead of pulling it out like a weapon. And you can't cook it if you have this on. Next are the basic movement keys, W, A, S, D. This is pretty standard for almost any PC game to move your character forward, back, left, and right. All right, for crouch, I've got mine set to C, press. Basically, it's a crouch toggle. You don't hold it to stay crouched. You're going to press it once to crouch and then again to stand up. 
for my prone keybind, I've got it to X. Press, that means it's a toggle to go prone. Again, you're going to press X to go prone once and then press it again to stand back up. Next up is the creep function. I have it set to left control press. This makes your character walk slowly and generate less movement noise. I like to set it to toggle because I'm usually going to be near an enemy when I'm using this and I want my hands to be free to be able to quickly use other commands. All right, next are the turn left and turn right functions. Kind of named oddly, but these are the lean peak buttons. So for me, I personally swap the default keys Q and E. So I use Q to peek right. And this is because if I'm peeking right, I usually want to be able to move right to do a quick peek and move back in. I find it difficult to do that if it's on E. And I'll show you what I mean here. I'll pull up to a wall and then peek over to the right. It's much easier for me to hold Q and then push the D button to peek out right and then go back in. If I'm trying to hold E and move right while pushing the D key, I don't know, it's just, I don't know, the overlapping keys are just difficult for me to do. So here's a left peek, same thing. I use the E key to peek left, and then I can use the A key to move left and move back in pretty easily. It's more streamlined for me. The next one is a key you're gonna use a lot. It's for sprinting. I have it on left shift hold, so if I'm holding the shift key, I'm going to sprint. If I let go of it, then I will stop sprinting. It's set to toggle by default. I prefer to hold it. I mean, this is personal preference, so adjust this according to your own. I've got jump on spacebar. I think that's a pretty universal setting there. The free look key is not adjustable for some reason. It is the middle mouse button. If you hold it down, it's like moving your head only. It will not affect the actual camera view. Next are the fire and aim keys. Left mouse is to fire. You hold it to continue firing. And for aim, I also have this on hold instead of press. So some people like to toggle it. Some people like to hold it. I personally like to hold it. Next is the hold breath function. I have it set to caps lock. It's a toggle only function. You can't change it to hold. So if you are in ADS mode, you can press the caps lock button to hold your breath. You'll hear the character take a deep breath and you should see the crosshair stabilize once you do it. So I'll show this to you again. This is a pretty important keybind to know. Once I'm holding my breath, there isn't much sway, but once I let go of the breath, you're going to see that weapon sway a lot more. This does use up your aiming stamina. So just make sure you have enough when you use it. All right, moving on to reload and check magazine. These are also two very critical functions. R is reload, I have it on press. And then check magazine. This lets you know how much ammo you have remaining in the current magazine that's loaded into your weapon. So this is a very important function as you don't have a HUD in this game. So you gotta know kind of how much ammo is in your mag at all times. If you forget, you can use this to check. All right, another critical function, <laughs> there's a lot of critical functions to know in this game, okay, is switch firing mode. This will switch your weapon from semi to full auto. If you buy a new weapon off the market, it's going to be set to semi by default. So make sure that you know how to do this and set your weapon to full auto. All right, next is inspect weapon. I have it set to G double click. One of the coolest things about this game is being able to build cool looking weapons. So. I like to use this a lot. It's not critical, but it's really cool. All right, so I don't have any grenades on my scav here, but if you hold down the G button, you'll get a wheel. And if you have throwables in your inventory on your pocket or your rig, then it will show up here and you can choose them accordingly. Next is a switch sight power and switch sight slash magnification buttons. I have them set to middle mouse press and back button press. So if your sight has different reticle options, you can change it with the middle mouse button. And if you have an adjustable optic, I use the back button to switch between the different options. Next, these are a little bit more advanced controls. Increase and reduce sight zero. This lets you adjust the reticle according to the distance your target is at. I have it set to mouse wheel up and down. You can see the zero distance changing at the bottom and you can see the reticle 
ticks up and down according to the distance that I set. All right, so if you have a laser or a flashlight attached to your weapon, you can use T to enable and disable it. All right, if you're running a face mask or you're running something like T7s, the end button will toggle whatever equipment you have on your headgear. For my discard item key, I use H. And if I hover over an item in my backpack or my rig and press H, it's going to drop it. I have the default F to interact and loot. To rotate an item in your inventory, I'm going to hold the item and press R. To quick drop my backpack, I have it bound to Z double press. All right, that's all I got for you in this one. I hope it was helpful or informative. If it was, please consider liking and subscribing to help support the channel. I appreciate you guys very much, and I'll see you in the next one.